Hello, my name is Edward, and today I'm going to talk about high-end reality practical advice for implementing and evaluating AIML for cybersecurity. A quick disclaimer before we get started. See, opinions expressed in this presentation are my own and do not reflect the view of my employer. One slide about myself. I'm currently the AIML and detection lead at ActraHub Networks. I founded ActraHub's CloudML Behavioral Attack Detection Service six year, years ago, and I previously worked on automated binary analysis and software defenses at UC Berkeley and UW Seattle. Finally, a bit of fun fact about myself. I built the first working remote code execution exploit for Zeus Bombnet a decade ago when I was working as an undergrad research assistant. My talk today is going to split into two sections. In the first section, I'm going to talk about what AIML can and cannot do in cybersecurity today. And for the second section, I'm going to talk about a set of recommendations for pr practitioners who are either implementing or evaluating AIML-based cybersecurity solutions. So let's start it with the hype. So the first hype we are going to talk about is the claim of having a single holy grail machine learning algorithm that can solve all the problems in cybersecurity. In reality, application of AIML for cybersecurity involves solving many different problems. And as a result, different algorithms are needed to solve different subtasks. It's kind of similar to how autonomous driving systems does not involve a single machine learning algorithm, but instead utilizes dozens of different AIML modules. On the bottom left-hand side, you can see a visualization or architectural diagram of Udacity's autonomous driving system. And you can see there are a few different sub-modules such as perception, object detection, localization, planning, and control that are working in unison to deliver the final autonomous driving behavior. The second hype I want to talk about is detection with no false positives. AIML-based attack detection is very popular today, and a lot of vendors claim that their AIML-based solutions are able to identify attacks with no false positives. However, in reality, even detectors based on perfect data, perfect algorithm, and perfect domain expertise will still require um, additional human ana analysis and could still generate false positives. The reason of that is the definition of secure actually varies greatly across customers and organizations. Sometimes what separates an attack and a beha benign behavior is actually the underlying operation, operation context or the intention of the behavior. For example, in an environment, user A performing SIFs, share enumeration, will be considered as malicious. But at the same time, the exact same behavior could be benign if user A was responsible for performing a new data mapping initiative. And frequently during operation, a lot of these contacts are actually unavailable to the component performing the analysis. So it's incredibly difficult for those, for those components to read operators' minds and understand the intention of behaviors observed. 
the third type that you guys might have seen a lot is the claim of autonomous easy button. However, the reality is that the cost of incorrect remediation and quarantine can be extremely high depending on the operation criticality of the asset uh, where the false positive has been identified. Current state-of-the-art technology in general is not able to respond to attacks autonomously without risking taking down or in negatively impacting normal business operation. Given that response automation can still be achieved in very specific environments and scope, but prevalence of false positives definitely make it quite risky uh, when trying to operationalize it in a very broad deployment. We talk about a few claims that are unrealistic. Let's now look at how AI, AI ML can actually assist uh, in cybersecurity today. So right now, AI ML can already help with many analytical tasks and can be utilized to convert data and telemetry to actionable insights. Some examples of these tasks include behavioral attack detection, prioritization, assisted investigation, uh, as well as many others. Well, far from perfect, most of the time, AI ML, if done right, can be an extremely powerful force multiplier for security teams today. So now let's look at a few of these applications. The first application I want to discuss is behavioral attack detection. In general, behavioral attack detection refers to the practice of observing runtime behavior of certain entities and identify potential attacks. These entities can be executables, users, devices, or servers on the network, as well as groups of devices or subnets. At the same time, runtime behavior can be recorded in many different formats. For example, on the agent side, runtime behavior can be recorded as binary execution trace, um, as well as log data, such as system logs, application logs, or VPN logs. In addition to that, runtime behavior can also be recorded in the format of NetFlow, as well as metadata extracted from parsing network packets. AI ML for behavioral attack detection is actually a very popular application domain. Compared to traditional heuristics and rule-based approaches, AI ML-based solutions provide significantly less noise and at the same time offer ability to dynamically adapt to the environment that's being protected. In addition to that, AI ML solutions are able to leverage operational contacts, which is critical to the detection of sophisticated attacks or unknown unknowns. Let's now look at an example of how to detect suspicious PS exact activities in the environment. So for those of you guys who are not familiar with PS exact, it is a popular remote access tool that enables users to access other Windows machines without pre-deploying any server or agent. It is commonly used by administrators, but at the same time, it's also frequently utilized by attackers to move laterally across different Windows machines and when combined with Mimikatz used for privilege activation. So in order to detect suspicious PS exact activities in the environment, the SOC analysts or cyber defenders might start with a relatively naive heuristic based approach where they will just alert if any use of PS exact was observed in the environment. It is quite obvious that this approach or heuristics will be very noisy due to different administrators' benign uses of this tool. 
given that information or observation, the cyber defenders might choose to level up the sophistication and refine the approach by adding an additional condition so that the alert will not be raised if the client device is in the set of known administrator laptops or workstations. However, this approach is also not easily operationable because it requires constant maintenance as well as tuning to reduce noise caused by other non-administrators or management tools that use PSXF. So one possibility of applying AIML for the detection of suspicious PS exec involves using unsupervised learning algorithms. So unsupervised learning algorithms are algorithms that can identify underlying patterns in input data and mark statistical outliers. These algorithms are commonly used for building predictive models for benign behaviors in the environment, and they are capable of self-adapting to changing environments, for example, introduction of new users or devices, as well as changing underlying behaviors. Conceptually, unsupervised learning algorithms are a good fit for implementing a and unusual operator in detection rules. And sample and supervised algorithms include clustering, isolation forest, PCA, com principal component analysis, as well as VAE, variable autoencoder. So in order to apply unsupervised learning to enhance the efficacy and accuracy of suspicious PS exact detection, one can build an unsupervised machine learning model that actually learns the common uses of PS exact based on different factors over time. And these factors could include time of use, uh, the user that initiated the session, the client device, the role of the client device, as well as server device and the role of the server device. And the machine learning algorithm could alert if unexpected use of PS exact has been observed. The benefit of applying machine learning for suspicious PS exact detection is that this new model will be able to automatically adapt to different benign uses of PS exact in the environment across multiple factors. In addition to that, uh, it could also help to detect really subtle or potentially stealthy attacks. Uh, for example, when an IT administrator starts to run PX exact from a finance machine during the weekend uh, and remotely. The next practical application of AI ML I want to discuss is prioritization. Today, security teams are always overwhelmed by alerts and vulnerabilities, and good prioritization helps them to maximize ROIs of their limited time and resources. It also makes a lot of sense because in the consumer technology world, the same AIML-based recommendation systems have been widely adopted and are the driving force behind many tech giants today. You can already see or experience a lot of these systems in the form of digital content recommendation, ad targeting, as well as merchandise recommendation. Let's look at a concrete example of an alert prioritization project. To get started, the SOC analyst might choose to build a rule where alerts on devices in a specific subnet should be prioritized first. However, it's obvious that this approach is not very precise or accurate because in general prioritizing alerts require analysis and also depends on many different factors. A more refined heuristic approach might involve 
the analyst building a complex point space system that increases and decreases relativity priority based on different factors. However, this approach is still very manual and it's very hard to scale, especially when the number of factors increases above 10. So prioritization is one area where a category of machine learning algorithms called supervised learning could help. In general, supervised learning algorithms are capable of learning the relationship between the input data and the output label. Supervised learning algorithms are already used in areas such as image classification, spam classification, optical character recognition, as well as property price prediction. Simple supervised learning algorithms include SVM, support vector machine, linear regression, logistic regression, as well as neural networks. So continuing on the example of the alert prioritization project, the practitioners can leverage supervised learning to build a model that it is able to predict the priority of a given alert based on a historical data set containing manual triage alerts. Essentially, in this case, the machine learning model will be able to infer the relationship between relative priority and multiple factors by observing how the analysts or the security teams have triaged alerts in the past. The third practical application area of AIML I want to touch on is assisted investigation. It's obvious that modern security tools generate tons of alerts and the alert investigation is often extremely time consuming. I think there are reports saying on average investigation of a single alert could take up to 20 or 30 minutes. In this area, AIML can assist by automating the process of context gathering as well as incident grouping. So for context gathering, AIML solutions are able to simulate the human analyst behavior of, for example, going to 15 different dashboards or queries and look for unusual behaviors or spikes at the time of the alert. For incident grouping, AIML solutions can analyze multiple alerts and identify whether there are pre-existing correlation among them that might indicate some sort of multi-step attack campaign or a bigger incident. So we touched on a few applications of practical applications of AIML. And let's now change gears a bit and talk about some recommendations. Uh, to get started, I want to talk about recommendations for practitioners who are actually planning to implement AIML solutions or incorporate AIML to some of their operations. The first recommendation I have for implementing AIML is the importance of pick your battles. In general, application of AIML takes a lot of resource and the ROI might not make sense for certain low value problems. In addition to that, it's much easier to apply AIML on tasks that are already well defined and narrowly scoped, associated with the existing data sets, as well as can be solved or mostly solved by human heuristics. The second recommendation I have for implementation of AIML is to focus and make sure you have all three key ingredients. In general, successful application of AIML requires a good combination and blend of these three key ingredients, which are data, data science, and cybersecurity domain expertise. Most of the time, quality and quantity of data has the biggest impact on the success of an AIML application. However, one common problem I have observed is that a lot of times security teams will hire a data scientist and simply point him or her to a large collection of cybersecurity data 
without providing the necessary domain knowledge first. And unfortunately, it's not going to work most of the time because in order to properly apply data science, the data scientists also need to have a reasonably good understanding of the cybersecurity problem he or she has been taxed with solving. The final recommendation I have around this is to expect and embrace aggregation. Similar to other applications of AI ML, no machine learning model or capability is remotely perfect even after the first 10 iterations. And from my experience, this is, this is especially true for cybersecurity applications where the problem domain is often not well understood or extremely complex and dynamic. A good rule of thumb is to expect building a prototype with 99% accuracy being only 25% of the journey. In addition to that, for AIML based detection projects, one should expect false positive reduction to be the most challenging bit. Next, let's change gears a little bit and talk about some recommendations for vendor evaluation. There are a lot of AI ML based security products today, and you might have heard a lot of vendors bragging about their proprietary algorithms or sophisticated algorithms such as deep learning and neural networks. However, in practice, complex algorithms typically require exponentially more data to train and often are not necessarily the best algorithm for a given problem. From my experience, applying a single, simple algorithm to the correct set of input data typically produces far better results than applying sophisticated algorithms to the wrong data. For a concrete example, let's look at database brute force detection. In general, database error logs plus simple ML algorithms will typically outperform the application of a sophisticated algorithm like deep neural networks on, on data that contains less signals, such as TCP packet lengths and sizes. Another recommendation I have, or the practitioners should look out for, is to pay close attention to the quality and quantity of the input data being used by the AI ML modules. A lot of times we ingest everything is usually a yellow flag because effective application of AI ML requires in-depth knowledge about the input data. It's actually very, very difficult to build effective AI ML modules that will work on arbitrary data. In addition to that, another area practitioners should pay a lot of attention to when they're evaluating products is the false positive rate. I've seen a lot of practitioners focused heavily on false negative rate or the ability to not miss real attacks during the POCs. While it is extremely important for the AI ML based solution to not miss real attacks, noise or the false positive rate actually is frequently overlooked. In general, noise has a huge impact on the operationalization and the production efficacy of an AI ML product because even if the product is able to not miss any real attacks, by simply generating a lot of noise, the product could quickly cause the security teams to lose confidence and stop using it. Another factor to consider when evaluating AI ML products are the scale. It's obvious that AI ML solutions in general require a lot of compute resources and mature ML solutions could involve dozens of algorithms and millions of models per site. 
There are two ways to typically deploy ML solutions. One is to run the ML algorithms and models on board of some sort of on-premise or virtual appliance. The other way is to offload features to the cloud and execute machine learning models in the cloud. In general, onboard ML solutions are constrained by the local compute resources and typically perform worse than the cloud-based solutions. And you might have concern around the ability for cloud-based ML solutions to be effective without the access of sensitive PI data. However, at this point, there are a number of techniques that could be utilized to assist with ML algorithms and help them to achieve very high level of efficacy even without accessing any sensitive PII data in plain text. My final recommendation for AI ML product evaluation is to test in realistic environments. Most AI ML solutions are actually extremely sensitive to the environment um, because similar to building physical devices, building complex AI ML solutions that can operate across a wide range of networks is actually very difficult. An analogy will be to build an AI doctor that is not, able, not only able to detect diseases in humans, but also all the way down to single cell organisms. We have seen AI ML solutions that actually works perfectly in small lab environments, but simultaneously quickly falls apart in realistic environments, for example, with 10,000 devices. In addition to that, Keep in mind that many vendors actually include some form of POC mode in their AI ML product to artificially increase the sensitivity for small, lab P for small lab POC environments. If not clearly disclosed, these practices are somewhat ethically questionable and often leads to reduced efficacy post-purchase because the POC mode cannot be turned down in real-world deployments. In conclusion, today AI ML provides a practical and scalable way to automate the conversion from data or telemetry to actionable insights in cybersecurity. At the same time, we are still at the early days of applied AI ML, and I will personally characterize our maturity today as a form of intelligence augmentation and not autonomous intelligence. In general, AI ML has been overhyped and oversold by a lot of security vendors, but there are a few reputable vendors who have been making investments for years and have products that actually do what they claim. That's it for my talk. Thank you for your time.